Back in February, I believe it was, there was a story that came out. This is in the wake of the investigations that were launched into to Bridgegate, as they call it, to the shutting down of the George Washington Bridge by Governor Christie's um, cronies in the Port Authority. Now, recall that the Port Authority is an agency which has jurisdiction over a lot of mass transit that crosses between New York and New Jersey. So this is a, the implications of that are quite large. It means that any issues dealing with the Port Authority become federal issues because it is a bi-state agency. Something happens with the George Washington Bridge. Not only can the New Jersey State Attorney General look into it, not only could theoretically the New York State Attorney General look into it, but the New Jersey U.S. Attorney can look into it and the New York U.S. Attorney. Now, there's multiple districts in New York. They sort of fight it out as to what's going to get it, depending on what the issue is. And over the course of the investigation, they started looking into the Port Authority, and the chairman of the Port Authority at the time was a guy named David Sampson. Sampson had been a, a, the attorney general under uh, McGreevy. He had then been appointed by Chris Christie, the chairman of the Port Authority. The Port Authority runs uh, the bridges, the airports, Newark International Airport run by the Port Authority. So over the course of their investigation, apparently investigators came up with a relationship between David Sampson and United Airlines. United Airlines, their hub, their primary airport, they've gone all in. In fact, they've bought out leases at Newark for like gates and whatnot that they don't even use on a regular basis just to keep other airlines out. But there's all sorts of fees associated with Newark Airport that aren't at LaGuardia and JFK. And so they have an interest in trying to get those fees down. They also wanted an expansion of rail to the Newark Airport because that was going to help them. So they met with David Sampson. And as reported, I guess it was back in, uh, in May, I think it was by WNYC. That records show in September of 2011, David Sampson and Baroni, uh, another guy who has since had to resign from the Port Authority, Sampson also did. Baroni was uh, actually, I believe, implicated in the shutdown of the, um, the bridge, along with this guy, David Wildstein, who was Chris Christie's you know, buddy from high school, who Chris Christie claims now he doesn't even know. So they went to dinner with Jeff Smizek, United Airlines CEO. And they ate at a very fancy Italian restaurant in Gramercy Park in Manhattan. And according to Bloomberg News, Samson began to complain at dinner that he and his wife had grown really weary of the trip to their weekend home in Aiken, South Carolina. Because the best flight out of Newark was to Charlotte, North Carolina. And then they had to drive there. Previously, Continental had run a direct route to Columbia, South Carolina, which is uh, 100 miles closer to the Sampson home. So they had an extra hour and a half, almost two hour drive to get to their weekend place. But uh, Continental had ended that route. And I think United had basically bought out uh, Continental. In fact, I think Smizek had come from Continental. And then uh, Bloomberg reports, in a tone described by one observer as playful, 
but not joking, Samson asked, could United revive that route? And just oddly enough, it seems that they could. And that route became known as the chairman's route. I don't know why they called it that. I do know that the flights were rarely half full. Seems like a bad business move. Unless you think that maybe there's some other reasons to do that. And also, coincidentally, three days after David Sampson resigns amidst this Port Authority scandal, <laughs> United decides, coincidentally, to end that route. Well, uh, yesterday, or not yesterday now, it was, I guess, um, two days ago, United Airlines CEO Jeff Smizek steps down amid federal investigation associated with the Port Authority. And not only Jeff Smizek resigns, but also United's Executive Vice President for Communications and Government Affairs, Nene Foxhall, and the Senior Vice President for Corporate and Government Affairs, Mark R. Anderson, also resigned. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Could they have all wanted to spend more time with their family? I don't know. Maybe they're all, maybe they're all cousins, and they all wanted to spend more time with each other. But if you have these three people, one of whom we know was at that dinner, maybe all three were. If they are resigning because of this investigation, presumably, right, they were doing something with the government, with the Port Authority, that was arguably illicit. And if they were doing that with the Port Authority, one has to believe they were doing it with people at the Port Authority. And it's reasonable to assume that that person was David Sampson, the chairman of the Port Authority, the guy who loved to take that flight. Now, I pose it to you, ladies and gentlemen, if you were 72 years old and got weary about having to take your weekend flight and then driving an extra hour and a half, do you think you'd be up to going to prison <laughs> for a guy? I mean, I don't know what the chairman of the Port Authority could offer to federal authorities. Apparently, he's still a close advisor to Chris Christie, which would probably give him a very close-up bird's-eye view to the failure that is Chris Christie's campaign. So that whole thing, like, where I would never rat on a guy who could become president becomes, I would never rat on a guy who's not going to become president, whose popularity has fallen significantly in New Jersey and could most definitely not be governor again. Am I going to go to prison for one two, seven, ten years just to not protect this guy? What could I do to stay out of prison? What could I give to these federal prosecutors? My guess is, is that Samson is going to look at it. He's not indicted yet, so maybe none of this happens. But if he is, uh, if they ask him, my guess is right now, Samson is sitting probably in his summer home at, uh, or his weekend home in Aiken, South Carolina, <laughs> turning to his, uh, there's probably a lot of golf there, that would be my guess. And it's year-round golf. Turning to his wife and saying, like, um, I don't want to go to jail, honey. Do you think I could fight this? At one point, he'll realize, hmm... If the guys from United Airlines didn't think that they could keep their jobs and, and fight this, I may be in some trouble. So uh, Chris Christie now, I think, is going to stay in the race until the, the I, 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 he may stay in the race until like, at, like the day after the convention. Just like, I'm still a presidential candidate. You would never indict 
a guy running for president. It's one thing to be Rick Perry, be indicted and then run for president. But um, I have a feeling, uh, I don't know if Chris Christie will end up in jail, but he's, I have a feeling he'll have to do something. Yeah. And we're getting ahead of ourselves, but we already have a ultimate fantasy scenario about how at least the arrest takes place. Yeah. What was it again? The notion would be that Chris Christie returns to New Jersey after a spectacular failed oh, yes, presidential yes, yes, campaign. Yes, yes. He's under Steve's indictment. Right. The New Jersey public and police departments have deputized, deputized the Bruce boss. Springsteen, who's standing there with cuffs. And well, Chris doesn't see the cuffs at first. He doesn't see the cuffs at first. He's like, Bruce is here to greet me. When in, he's in jail. And you know who is... Uh, Bruce goes, I got something for you, yeah. big man. Let me see your hand. I'm ready to finally shake it. Click, click. <laughs> <laughs> and then, the standing next... The stint will do your soul some good. Standing next to Bruce Springsteen, when they slap on the cuffs, John Bon Jovi. Oh, insult to injury. There you go. Insult to injury. My friend John Bon Jovi just wanted to see the look on your face when I put the cuffs on you. That would be hilarious. I would enjoy that. I got to say, I would really enjoy it.